this video we're going to review exponents and exponent rules. So first just some terminology uh, for the expression 5y to the seventh. The 5 is the coefficient, y is the base, and 7 is the exponent. In our second expression, the base of the exponent 6 is just the x. This negative is part of the coefficient in front. So the base is x. The coefficient is negative 1. The base can also be an expression. The base of the exponent 5 is this whole thing, this x to the fourth. The first rule we have is called the product rule. It is for multiplying like bases. So you will keep the base and add the exponents. For our first example, notice this entire problem is a multiplication. Everything inside here is multiplication. Everything here is multiplication. Because of the associative law of multiplication, you are allowed to rearrange this if you would like. So we can pull the pieces that look alike. So the x's can go together, and the y's. And then we'll see that we just have two little problems of this rule. For our x's, we have like bases. We will need to keep the base, add the exponents. For the y's, same situation. We have like bases multiplied. Keep the base, add the exponents. Remember, if you don't see an exponent, it's understood to have a 1 for an exponent. So it will be y to the third. We have another example that is also all multiplication. Every piece there is multiplied. So we are allowed to rearrange it if we would like. So I'm going to pull my numbers, 7 and 8, my x's, and my y's. And then we'll just go across. So for our numbers, we will do regular multiplication. So 7 times 8 is 56. For our x's, this is our exponent rule. Keep the base, add the exponents. So we get x to the 7th. For the y, same rule. Keep the base, add the exponents. Don't forget the 1. So 56, x to the 7th, y to the 6th. Our next problem is also just a multiplication. And so we can go ahead and multiply the numbers. Just watch your sign rules. You're multiplying two negatives. That's an even number of negatives. So it will be a positive 54. For your variables, you will keep the base and add the exponents. Our next rule we have is called the power rule. When you raise a power to a power, so an exponent raised to an exponent, you will keep the base and you will multiply the exponents. Here's an example of a power to a power. So we have one base, it's raised to a power, and that whole thing is raised to another power. So we're going to keep the base and we're going to multiply the 4 times 5 to get 20. If I have a product to a power, so it has to be multiplication inside, it will just apply this rule to as many times as you have pieces in the product. So the m will go to each one. So here's a nice example. It is a product to a power. The power will go to each one. So I will have x to the 7th to the 3rd, y to the 4th to the 3rd, and these are just the power to a power rule. So we will keep the base and multiply the exponents. Same thing for the y's, keep the base, multiply the exponents. For our next example, we do have a product to a power. The 2 is going to apply to each piece, so we have 3 squared x to the 4th squared y cubed squared. 
the three to the second power we actually have to raise this is not a power to a power it is a number to a power so three squared gives us nine but the other two are a power to a power so we will keep the base and multiply so four times two is eight and three times two is six so be careful if you write the steps you won't miss it we'll look at a couple of problems that are combinations of these rules uh, first of all on this one we do have a multiplication the whole thing is a multiplication we need to take care of this parentheses the exponent only goes to the pieces inside the parentheses it has nothing to do with the part over here so we'll take care of that it is a product to a power so the 2 is going down to each piece so we're gonna have 3 squared x squared y cubed squared 3 squared we have to work out that means 3 times 3 which is 9 the x squared is already worked out for us and the y cubed squared is a power to a power so keep the base and multiply and now we'll just bring the first part down 5x squared y to the fourth remember this is multiplication now we're back to like our very first rule everything is multiplied you can rearrange it if you like because of the associative law of multiplication so I'm gonna put the things that are alike together numbers will do plain old multiplication so 9 times 5 is 45 now we have like bases multiplied you keep the base and add same thing on the y's keep the base and add we have one more problem that will be a combination of our rules uh, and it would say simplify so it is a multiplication problem all the pieces are multiplied we need to take care of this parentheses first and get the exponent down so it's going to go down to each piece notice your negative is on the inside of the parentheses so it is going to go to the power so we're going to have negative 4 to the third power x squared to the third power y to the fourth to the third power so negative 4 to the third power is negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 three negatives that's odd so it will be negative and that will give us a 64 then we have a power to a power so keep the base and multiply same thing on the was keep the base and multiply we'll bring down the rest of our problem 2 x to the fourth y to the sixth now everything we have is a multiplication rearrange it if you like or just pick off the pieces that match maybe we'll go that way this time so we can do our numbers we only have one negative so it's going to be negative and this will give us 64 times 2 will give us a negative 128 for our X's they are now side by side or like bases multiplied we will keep the base and add same thing for our Y's keep the base and add the exponents our next rule is called the quotient rule so we have like bases divided you will keep the base and subtract the exponents so for this example it is like bases divided we will keep the base so one copy of the X and subtract the exponents for our next problem it is like bases divided we could keep the base and subtract the exponents which gives us 8 to the first this simplifies just to 8 notice I didn't do any math on the bases I kept the base you also could work this problem with order of operations you could work out 8 to the fourth you could work out 8 to the third and then divide those the exponent rule is just a faster way to work this problem but the bases have to be the same to use it our next problem is just four little problems put together 
Uh, we have plain numbers. We have X's, we have C's, we have D's. For plain numbers, you divide if it will divide evenly or just reduce. 12 will not go into 14, so we will reduce. Uh, we can do that with a factor of 2 because they're both even. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. For the x's, we will keep the base and subtract. For the c's, keep the base, subtract your exponents. And for your d's, keep the base and subtract. We have one more example that has uh, four little problems here. We have numbers, we have A's, we have C's, we have D's. So for our numbers, uh, 21 will not go into 30, so we will reduce. It looks like a common factor of 3 there. So 3 into 30 will go 10 times, 3 into 21 will go 7. For your A's, Keep your base and subtract exponents. For the C's, keep the base and subtract. For the D's, don't forget you have a 1 on the D down here, so 5 minus 1 leaves us 4. For our next couple of problems, we have two different ways that we could think about them. Uh, if we use the rule that we've been using, we have like bases divided keep the base and subtract. If we go top to bottom, as we have been, we get this weird expression, something to a negative power. But how do you make negative copies of something? Let's think about this problem another way. If we made the picture of what these mean, so x squared means x times x and x cubed means three of those x's. Right. When you have all products, you can match up and divide them out. Right. And so we know we're left with just an x in the denominator. We're really dividing, so there will be a 1 in the numerator if everything divides out. Right. We know this is the right answer, and that is how we'll define this first one. Uh, if we get something to a negative, it will switch to the denominator. But a different way we can think about it, if you have all positive exponents, you can think of the picture if you just do the biggest one minus the smallest one. So 3 minus 2, that's what we really did when we were crossing off. However many are left, are left where you have the most. So I have 1x left, 3 minus 2 is 1, it is left where I had the most. So we'll try that rule for a couple of problems. For our next one, so if we want to think that way in terms of the picture, we have three x's on top, five on the bottom. If we subtract, we will have two x's left on the bottom. That's where we had the most. We'll try this approach with some larger problems. So this example is really four little problems. It is numbers, it is A's, it is C's, and it is D's. The numbers we're still going to reduce. We have a common factor of 3 here. 3 will go into 15 5 times, and 3 into 21 will go 7. For the A's, if we would like to avoid the negative exponents, we already have positive, so we can think of the picture. So we have 5 minus 2 will leave us 3 wherever we had the most. So it will be on the bottom for that one. For the C's, we have 7 C's on top, 3 on the bottom. 7 minus 3, we have 4 left on top. The D's are actually going to cancel, so there are no D's left. Here's another example with four little problems. We have numbers, we have A's, we have C's, we have D's. The numbers, the 11 will actually divide evenly into 22. It will go two times. For the A's, we have 9 A's on top, 4 on the bottom. Subtract, it will stay where you have the most. 
So it is staying on the numerator. This sees we have three on bottom and one on top. So three minus one leaves us two. It will have to stay where you have the most. So it will have to go in the denominator. And the D's, you have three on the bottom, two on top. The denominator has the most, so you are left with one D on the denominator. We have one more problem of that type. Um, it has three little problems in it. First, for our numbers, we will just reduce. Common factor of two, two will go into two one time. Two will go into ten five times. For the A's, we have four on the denominator, three on top. So we'll subtract. We'll have one A left on the bottom. For the C's, we will subtract. We will have one C left on the bottom. You do have to have the one in the numerator to show that the others are in the denominator. So it must look like this. You cannot write 5AC.